Now let's go back and look at example one. Given functions f of x and g of x, f of x is linear, g of x is quadratic. Find f plus g of x. So we will take f of x, which is 2x plus 1, and add g of x. And that will give us, in standard form, x squared plus 4x, and the 1's cancel. So let's make sure we write this out. We want to say f plus g of x is equal to x squared plus 4x. On part b, find f minus g of x. So we'll do the same thing. It'll be 2x plus 1, but now we will subtract. And do pay attention to the order that the f and the g come in. Uh, but we are going to subtract f of x minus g of x. Because you are subtracting a quantity, everything inside gets subtracted. So I'll write it out that way so you can see what we're going to combine. And so it looks like we'll get negative x squared. The 2x's cancel. And then you have plus 2. So f minus g of x is equal to negative x squared plus 2. And so that's addition and subtraction. Now on this one it does want us to evaluate when x is equal to negative 2. So we can plug that in. We can say f minus g of negative 2 and then you make sure you square the negative 2 and then add 2. So that would be negative 4, because negative 2 squared is positive 4, but then the negative on the outside, plus 2 is equal to negative 2. So we would want to say f minus g of negative 2 is actually equal to negative 2 also. So you got two parts there. On the next example, you're given f of x and g of x again. But on this one, we'll be finding the product and the quotient. f of x is equal to x squared. g of x is equal to x minus 3. So we're going to first do the product, and then we'll evaluate it as well. So on this one, we're going to take the f function, which is x squared, and multiply by the g function, x minus 3. And so we can distribute, and that will give us x cubed minus 3x squared. So that's f times g of x. And then we're going to evaluate. Now this one actually it says f times g of x is equal to 0. So we're actually going to plug 0 in for f times g of x, which 0 is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared. And now we'll have to solve this. We can factor out an x. That'll leave us with x, actually factor out an x squared. So now that will leave us with x, min x squared times x minus 3. And so now we know x squared could equal 0, which means x is equal to 0. And x minus 3 could equal 0, so x could equal 3. So it says find x when that is equal to 0. So um, x, as we said, could equal 0 or 3 for that one. So we have two answers here. Here's the product and then there's the solutions when it's equal to 0. The next one is the quotient. It just wants us to uh, find the quotient and then evaluate when x is 3. So we will do f divided by g of x is equal to, so f of x is x squared, g of x is x minus 3. Well, the question really is, can I do anything with this? Now, some of you might think that you can cancel some x's, but remember, x squared is x times x, and x minus 3 is its own factor. It's not, x is not a factor in the denominator. So you cannot cancel any of the x's. So we are done with the, um, with the quotient, except we also need to indicate that x cannot equal 3 because that would make the denominator zero. And then the next part, if you're paying attention though, it says let's now find f divided by g of three. But from what we just said, we said x can equal three. So if you try to plug this in, you'll get three squared over three minus three, which is nine divided by zero. And we know that's undefined. So f divided by g of three 
does not exist because x equals 3 is not part of the domain. All right, we will now move on to compositions. I did that one with you guys earlier. Let's move on to example four. We're going to look at g of f of x, and then we're going to evaluate when x is 2 and when x is negative 4. So remember, pay attention to the order. It's g of f of x. So it's g of f of x, which is the square root of 4 minus x squared. And then wherever there's an x, you're going to replace it with the square root of 4 minus x squared. So it's x squared, so we'll do the square root of 4 minus x squared squared minus a. And then you evaluate. When you square a square root, those are inverses of each other, so they undo each other, cancel each other out. And now you're left with negative x squared minus 4. So g of f of x is equal to negative x squared minus 4. Now, the second part of this is to evaluate when x is 2 and x is equal to negative 4. So when x is 2, we're looking for g of f of 2 is equal to negative, and then you square the 2 minus 4. So that's negative 4 minus 4, which is negative 8. So g of f of 2 is equal to negative 8. Then we'll do x equals negative 4. So g of f of negative 4 is equal to the opposite of negative 4 squared minus 4, which is equal to negative 16 minus 4, so that would be negative 20. So g of f of negative 4 is equal to negative 20. So we've evaluated these, and, and everything seems to be okay, um, given that you know, our composition is correct, negative x squared minus 4. Well, let's take a look at this a little bit more. Let's find the domain of the composition of g of f of x. So let's first look at f of x, because that's what we're going to plug into our function g of x. What is the domain of f of x equals the square root of 4 minus x squared? Well, it's not all real numbers. You can't plug in whatever you want. You can only plug in values that are between negative 2 and 2, including negative 2 and 2. If you go outside that, um, you're going to get the square root of a negative number. So we have some restrictions as to what we're going to plug in for the function f of x. Now, g of x is x squared minus 8. So what's the domain for g of x. Well, it's a quadratic, so you can plug in whatever you want for that domain. So then what's the domain of the composition? Well, if you can only plug in negative 2 to 2 into f of x, and then you can plug whatever you want into g of x, so there's no real restriction on the g of x, it's really what the f of x is. So the composition g of f of x has a domain of all numbers between negative 2 and 2, including negative 2 and 2. So if you look back at the two questions I asked you, one of them was x equals 2. Well, that falls in the domain, so you did get negative 8 back, which would have been correct. But on the next one, I asked you what x equals negative 4 is, and we came up what we thought was an answer of negative 20. The problem is, is that negative 4 is not part of the domain. If you plug in negative 4 in for f of x, so if you say f of x equals the square root of 4 minus negative 4 squared, what happens? That's the square root of 4 minus 16. So we have the square root of a negative number, which is not part of the domain. So even though the square root's being squared and those undo each other, this is not a real number. So therefore, it cannot be part of the domain. So at x equals negative 4, this actually does not exist. So g of f of negative 4 is not negative 20. It does not exist because negative 4 is not part of the domain. 
And so you really need to pay attention when you're finding the domain of a composition or evaluating the composition and making sure whatever that domain is that any value that I ask to evaluate that is part of that domain.